There's a good way and a bad way to deal with a loose dog, and this is the bad way. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us out of Houston, Texas. Now more than ever, you need trusted coverage to help you win the fight after the fight. The company I trust and recommend is Firearms Legal Protection. They offer discounts on all their plans at the link in the description. I recommend the premium plan. So you can see the dog going out the front door in the middle of our screen and he's been barking and so his owner opened the front door to see if his brother had gotten there and the dog's running out because he's barking and freaking out in the front yard. What you can't see is on the right side there is a mother with her two, I think, kids that are riding their bikes in the street. Let's listen in what happens from here. Bruno! Get, Bruno, get over here, Bruno! So mom shot multiple times. She did graze the dog at least once that ran off. She actually had a ricochet that hit her five-year-old son in the abdomen. Uh, they did transport him to the hospital. Apparently the boy is going to recover. Mom has been charged with deadly conduct with a weapon in Texas, which can be charged as a misdemeanor or as a third class felony. I'm not sure which one of those they charged her with, but she is facing charges and we've got lessons to learn. Negative outcome big time on this one. And it leads me to a question. When's the last time you got training, like under instruction training, for your defensive firearms use. I'm a training junkie, I go to gun school all the time, but I'm curious about you. Leave me a comment and let me know, would you? So first things first, of course, friends, you gotta control your animals, right? If you have dogs, and I've owned dogs for most of my life, you gotta control your dogs. And you gotta recognize that a dog can be a serious threat to you, but I think it's worthwhile. There are so many dogs in America today to know what the behavior pattern of a dog is and whether it's actually dangerous and aggressive or if it's being curious and, uh, and just escaped and out. And those are very different things. And to read dog's body language, you gotta kinda pay attention to your world a little bit. Now this dog is gonna get out, kinda see what's going on in the neighborhood. His owner's coming out, see what the heck is going on. And now as we see in the top right, what's happening here, what I want you to notice right now is that the mom already has the gun in her hand. If you look at what she's got going here, she must have seen the dog earlier and decided to pull a gun in this particular case. And there is a time to use deadly force to stop a dog. If the dog is actively attacking a human, I think that deadly force then is certainly justified to use. I will say this, against a dog that is aggressive but not actually attacking, I think an OC spray is a much better choice because you don't run the risk of reckless discharge like this woman had. You don't run the risk of, of hitting something you don't mean to hit and you don't do permanent injury. In fact, you don't do any injury to the dog or to anyone else. At the most, they're in pain for a little while. And so I, this is one of the reasons that I think having something between a harsh word and a gun, to use Chuck Haggard's term, to have an OC spray on your person is important. And I keep one with me even when I'm out working out and those kinds of things. And I recommend that you do as well. She's already got the gun in her hand. Again, if the dog's actively attacking a person, okay, fine. But I want you to notice here that as it comes back up, she's also got just one hand on the gun. So which tells me she doesn't have a whole lot of skill with the firearm. So if you're gonna use a firearm, Again, I can't see what she's seeing in the dog. I can't see that if she says, no, that dog is attacking my child or is imminently about to attack my child, so I have to use that. But she's using the gun with one hand with very minimal skill set. Get two hands on the gun and get trained enough that if you have to use the firearm, that it, you have the skill to use the firearm to hit what you need to hit and not to miss and hit what you don't want to hit. Because that's exactly what she did here. Bang, bang, bang. And, and you missed all the shots, didn't hit the dog, had a ricochet come up and hit her son, which means as she moved that, she used her son as a backstop, didn't follow the rules of, say, firearms handling, which is reckless and negligent, so she's accountable for that. Now then, this has all happened. So here's my next, you know, really admonition to all of you is carry your first aid equipment on your person. Carry your equipment and have the skill to use it. 
Because of course, we wanna prevent this 100%. This was entirely a preventable incident, but sometimes things are going to happen that people are gonna need first aid, including maybe your loved ones, including maybe if you get in a gunfight. And this is one of the big reasons that I always have my first aid equipment on my person because if, God forbid, one of my loved ones has a penetrating injury like a gunshot wound, I wanna be able to get them the most help possible. Of course, in the abdomen, we're gonna use probably just a chest seal over that, get them to the emergency room as fast as we absolutely possibly can, and then let the doctors deal with that. And again, I think the boy's gonna make a full recovery, so that's great. Next thing here, I do not want you to get charged under these kinds of things and to have to end up going to jail. So make the smart decisions and only use your firearm when it's the right time and only do so in proficient and responsible ways. And of course, I want every single one of us to have something, you know, a legal protection program like Firearms Legal Protection, because that will help you to pay at least the lawyer's fees when you're going through this kind of stuff. And again, let's avoid it to begin with by doing the right thing. Have some legal protection on our side like Firearms Legal Protection, and then let's do the smart things to cover our ASP.